Hello everyone, it's Miranda here with another project to share for Prima Marketing. This time I'm altering another piece. This one is an elephant that I found at Marshall's here in the States. And I just absolutely fell in love with it, the shape and how tall it was. So I wanted to alter it. And it was beautiful in its own right, as you can see right here. Um, it was beautiful, like a grayish with these silver florals kind of coming down and they were embossed on there. But I wanted to make it more my style and kind of prima, prima fi it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to walk you step by step through. So the first step in everything when I alter is usually gesso. Um, I can't really think of anything I do other than that to prep my surface. And in this case, I'm using white gesso. Um, I'm going to be using some of the impasto paint. So I wanted to go ahead and get a clear, I mean not a clear, but a good white substrate so the pink would really show up true instead of putting it on top of that gray. So I'm just going to gesso the whole thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short so you're not seeing me do the whole thing, but I'm just going to do two coats of gesso. So I'm taking the princess stamp there from Prima and it's Maya. I want to say it's pronounced it's M-A-I-A. -A. It's one of my favorites and I wanted to just use the flowers that she has in her hair. So just the floral elements and I'm just stamping on a scrap sheet of paper and I want to say that's some love story paper. Yeah, that's some love story paper from Prima and designed by Frank Garcia. So I'm stamping two of those gals out just so that I can cut the little floral elements out of their hair and it just is a really, I love to fussy cut and these flowers are absolutely beautiful. So I just wanted to go ahead and use those um, in a different way than we would typically use our Prima Princess stamps. So that's what I'm doing there. And I love to use these little tiny cutter bee scissors. I think you have to use good scissors, otherwise you're not gonna have good results. So the smaller and the sharper your scissors, the better luck you're gonna have. So I cut those all out. Now I had already started and I forgot to hit record, but I wanted to go ahead and go over some more. So I'm using the raspberry pink impasto paint from Finnebear and it's a, a super thick paint. So I'm using a little bit of white gesso mixed in there just to kind of tone it down because it's a pretty bright, um, it's a pretty bright color. The color values are very, very, um, you know, a little a little too much for me. So I wanted to go ahead and tone it down with a little bit of the white gesso and you can add more and more. I knew I was gonna be doing drips and splattering and things like that, so I wasn't too concerned with how dark it was because I knew a lot would get covered. Um, and I'm adding a tidbit of alcohol ink, or I started to, but I decided that I did not like the way that it was really looking, so it'll, it'll all kind of get covered up. So it'll be the only thing you'll see me use that's not Prima. Um, so I'm grabbing the Sparks and Mermaid Sparkle and the Frozen Berries Metallic Art Alchemy Paint. And I am just going to start by spritzing those and adding some water. And I'm just going to use my paintbrush there and I'm going to let them run how they want to run and do what they want to do. And you'll have to do maybe two or three coats to get it how you like it, you know, drying in between and you'll get a really cool effect going on here. So that's what I'm going to be doing, just using the frozen berries, the mermaid sparkle sparks, and then I also have some uh, more of the heavy white gesso there. So I'm just gonna alternate between the three and just choose one of your paint brushes that um, have a small head. I'm using one of the thin bear brushes and I'm just going to use all the purple up and go all the way around. You don't wanna neglect any areas so try to pay attention to the whole thing, front, back, and both sides. Get your head, get the trunk. Um, I know everyone doesn't have an elephant lying around to alter, so just anything you're altering, try to pay attention to everything. So that way, no matter what view you know, you're looking at it from, I want it to look good. So that's why I try to pay so much attention to everything. So I'm adding the mermaid sparks right there, and I love these because um, if you've used these and you've spritzed them with water, you'll know what I'm talking about, but they leave this like shimmery, I mean, these are the most sparkly paints you'll ever use in your life. They're just absolutely beautiful and they leave like this clear, almost iridescence wherever you add a lot of water um, and you just kind of dab it up, it'll just kind of leave these really beautiful mica powders behind and it's just super beautiful. This is definitely one of those projects that 
the photos absolutely do it no justice. It's something that you need to see in person. So um, I'm kind of bummed that the photos didn't come out the way that they should have. Um, but it's definitely one of those projects that, you know, you just have to kind of see. But I'm just going to go ahead and keep going around and adding. And I'll use my blow dryer here and there to speed up the process a little bit. And I kind of turn it upside down and, you know, I like to have them running up and down so it doesn't really have a point of origin. So with the white paint, the white gesso, I really like it to be a little more spread out because it really helped to cover up that dark pink and kind of mute that down a little bit. So I'm just really letting that white just do its own thing. And it's gesso, so it's going to have a little different spray pattern than the, the others. You know, it's going to kind of be bigger, bigger sprays, and um, that's, that's fine with me. I love diluting the gesso and using it for things like this. It's just wonderful. So I'm just going to kind of use my, I use the, in the same, if you guys pay close t attention, I use the same paper towel, I think, the entire time. I'm really trying not to waste um, and it's soaking wet by the end, but I still keep using it. So that's what you're going for. You're going to dry it, and hopefully there you can see that shimmer I'm talking about that that sparks paint leaves. It's just, you cannot compare it to anything. So I'm taking one of the glue sticks that come for the planner kits. They're the glue pin sets, and I absolutely love these. I have quite a few, and I'm hoarding them like crazy. And I've already done the other side, but right now I'm just going on all that. I don't know if you can tell, but there's these embossed edges on this, um elephant and it's like leaves and like little vines so I'm just using some of the foil from Christine Adolph and some of that glue pen just to kind of get everything to stick and this one has been used over and over and over so I'm having to kind of move it around and get the good spots but I'm not going for full coverage I'm just kind of going for a nice metallic look so that's what it's going to look like when you get it all on there and now I'm grabbing my vines. These are some button vines, which are one of my favorites. I love any Prima vine. I know they're very hard to find. So if you do find them, grab them, get as many as you can because they are so hard to come by. So to prep my flowers, I always add clear gesso. Um, whether or not I know if I'm gonna add mediums or not, it's just not worth the risk to me. Like they just do not take the mediums as well without the clear gesso. So a little bit of prep work for Willy, will, will really set you up for um, phenomenal results. Like you won't have to worry if you decide to change your mind and go a different direction. As long as you have clear gesso on items, you don't have to worry about that. So it's just something I do to kind of prep everything and um, put my mind at ease. And I know I can add any medium I want to it and it's going to be completely fine. So those are some of those rose quartz flowers. I use a few... Um, random ones that um, I have a huge gigantic flower pot it's all glass I'll take a picture um, at some point and post it on my social media um, it's just gigantic and it's got loose flowers so I grabbed those from there now these are those transfers from the redesign line and I absolutely love these I wanted to incorporate the bonjour and then that beautiful flower or that flower vine it's just the vine part and I wanted to use the para sword too so that vine reminded me of what was already on the um, elephant. It already had those beautiful vines coming down and leaves. So I just want to kind of use that. And a tip for using these for me is to kind of cut as close as possible to the actual um, transfer. And that works really well for me. Now you'll see where the transfer is and you don't want to cut past that um, line where it's going to stick. But, you know, get, get as close as you can. So I decide I want the Paris to go right up front, and I'm just going to go ahead and stick that on there. And then it has, when you open each transfer, they each have a little burnishing stick, but you could use a bone folder or anything else you have. Um, I love the redesign line. It's absolutely incredible. I know you've been seeing a lot of projects on the blog. We've been doing chargers, clay pots, um, you name it. I have a million ideas to do. 
um, today's blog, they actually had um, place settings for tables and stuff. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So this is a line that I just definitely will not get enough of. I keep creating projects and I'm having to kind of force myself to stop and step away from them. So I'm just adding it there. And the cool thing here is if like you happen to miss a little bit, which I didn't there, um, you can just place it right back on top. It's clear. So you don't have to worry about that. So this is the one that says bonjour and I'm cutting it into two pieces because I want the first part running up one of the backs of the legs kind of on the inside so you won't really see it unless you're turning it that way but I really like to pay attention to everything um you know I want everything to have details I want everything to be you know interesting when you turn it around I want you to see something you didn't see the first time so that's very important to me so I'm just adding that there and using that same wooden stick you get in your redesign transfers to really burnish that well using my fingernails too because there are some ridges and some grooves on this so you want to make sure you really get that on there the way it should be. Okay, so now I'm going to add the top part there. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it off and get that stuck on there. And this one was a little trickier because we're going up onto the stomach with it. Okay, and now I'm just going to kind of use my fingernails here because it's kind of hard to get that wooden piece down in there. And I'm just doing the best I can, and if it doesn't come out perfect, that's okay, but it actually came out really well. So now I'm going to grab those vines again, and I'm just going to kind of go where I think it will look right. Now this was a little difficult to get to transfer because this is not a flat surface. Um, I'm hoping y'all can see that this is embossed because I keep telling you that, but it's kind of hard to pick up on... Um, on screen but it is embossed and it's raised so it's really hard to get those transfers to stick into those areas so you just kind of kind of work at it a little bit you can get them to stick to anything um, in fact I have a whole video coming out on just what all they will stick to it's just amazing so don't feel like if something has some grooves or some edges or ridges or curves that they won't fit they will fit perfectly fine and don't be afraid to cut them into pieces and use them for what you like. You know, you don't have to use it as a whole. That vine was very large, so I cut it into three pieces to suit my needs. And I'm big on doing that, on stretching your supplies and making it work for you. I think that's very important to do. Okay, and you can see there when I pulled it up, I had a little leaf that was not on there. So it was very easy to just push it right back down and then add the leaf on there. No big deal at all. Okay, so I'm going to add one piece there, and then I got one more coming up. So it's just the same routine. This side is extra ridged. This side had a lot more embossing than the other one, so that one's going to take a little bit more finagling. Um, but it came out really pretty, and I like the way it looked. So make sure if you follow Prima already, you follow the Redesign Instagram page and the Redesign Facebook group because we have a new team, which I'm a part of, which is called Redesign um, Petites. And it's all about doing smaller projects because you'll see these amazing, absolutely jaw-dropping projects from the Redesign team you know, altering these dressers and these huge furniture pieces. But for those of us who can't access those things or we don't have those on hand or that's just too daunting maybe to do, um, we have the redesigned petites now, which is going to, you know, kind of bridge the gap and do smaller projects. So I've got an older Finna Bear stamp there, one of her background, I think it was called like a book stamp. Um, I've had it for so long, I do not know. It stays in my pile of most frequently used ones. So I'm just using some black ink that will not budge. Um, it's not stays on, but it's a, um, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? My brain It's very late here, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and admit that. Um, I just got off a 24 hour shift and I am staying up super late to get this done on time. So, um, if my words are a little jumbled up, please forgive me. So I'm just kind of wrapping it around and not doing perfect squares, of course, just kind of tapping here and there with my stamp wherever I want it to go. And it's just a nice, subtle way to get some more texture and some more interest going on. 
Okay, so that's what we have so far. Now we're going to start adding our floral elements, which is my favorite part. So 3D matte gel is my go-to. I love it more than the gloss. Um, and a lot of people say, well, what's the difference? One, it just dries matte, and the other one just dries a little glossy. But if you're using them as glues, you don't have to really worry about that too much, you know. Um, and one thing I typically do when I have a lot of this um, 3D matte gel or, or a gloss gel even is if when I sprinkle, when I put the glue down, I'll sprinkle like art stones or some of the glass glitter or the mulberry flakes in this case. And I don't even think I did that on camera, y'all, but there you'll see some mulberry flakes in the final um, picture and that's because I did go in and just kind of pour it over as I was waiting on things to dry and let it lay where it wanted to lay. So I'm just using the end of my paintbrush to kind of dip it in there and I'm having it go down the opposite leg that I put the transfer on on that side and I could not decide which the left or the right side of this was going to be my focal point so I just kind of decorated them both and I guess whatever side that you like best that's the side to go with. Um, I couldn't really pick a favorite side so I wanted them both to look equally pretty. So I used two of the button binds. Those are from Fairy Tales. Um, those are some rose quartz flowers. Um, there may be even a little bit of lost and found ones in there, y'all. I mean, this is really coming straight from my, besides the button binds, the rest of the flowers are kind of coming straight from my little bin there with um, all my leftover bits and bobs of flowers that have came out of packages. And I'm trying to use those up because it is absolutely jammed full and I don't want to open any more packs unless, um, you know, I need to. So I'm adding that big one there and it even had like some white paint on the edge of it and it was down in there in the bucket and I did not mind that at all. It's going to get covered up. So there are those pieces that I stamped and fussy cut out from the Prin Prima Princess stamp and I love the way they came out. They're absolutely beautiful and they're so fun to just kind of tuck in and out and have some more variety of pink tones so it's not just such a dark pink color. You've got some light pinks and some creams and you know, everything's kind of going together. All these colors look great together, even the green. And in fact, this color, this palette came from the color challenge that's coming up this month. So you'll see that. Um, it's a little bit darker than some of the pink on there, but um, it's definitely inspired by the color challenge, which you will see coming up later on. So I'm just tucking those in wherever I see fit kind of where the leaves are and the flowers are and um, I'm trying to prop my elephant up there by its trunk on a, um, I think that's one of the stone effect pastes back there and it does keep slipping but that's okay. Um, this is a very sturdy, it's not porcelain, I don't know what this is made out of but it is a very strong piece and I was very happy about that. That's one of the things I definitely, when I'm looking for items to alter, I try to see how sturdy it is. If it's super breakable, I'm definitely not going to buy it because there's just no point. I know me and I know how well I break things. So, so I'm showing you a close up there of what those flowers looked like. Now I have a few butterflies. I have a whole bucket of butterflies that I fussy cut from collections and I can usually tell you the collection it came from and I know that this one came from the cherry blossom collection. So I love those butterflies. They're so pretty. I definitely wanted one going up the trunk. Um, it just needed to go up there, I felt like, just to kind of define that area and give it some prettiness. So that's what we have so far, and we are almost done, y'all. All we need now is a crown for our beautiful queen here. So this is a crown I had in my stash. I want to say this is one of those... Um, Michael's carried them for quite some time. I think they were like Arda cakes, Arda cakes, and I want to say that's what this was. So I'm just holding it on there until it dries. Now I'm taking these Memory Hardware crowns, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, Regalia, I want to say. So I'm cutting off the jump ring and the little attaching hoop, and what I'm going to do is I decided that was going to be the hoops for my, or the shoes for my, um, my elephant. So I'm just adding some of the 3D matte gel all the way through and I'm going to step those all around the bottom of my feet here for my elephant. 
and I really liked the way that looked. I felt like a, the bottom of the feet were definitely missing something, so I think that really helped kind of tie everything together. So I'm just making sure I get a good amount on there so it adheres well, but I don't want anything coming above the top of that because otherwise you would see it. So I'm going to line them up very well, and then I'm just going to step the feet into them. And then this quick little video is just going to show you what it looks like with those on there because I know it was kind of hard to tell. So excuse the shakiness, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview. But the pictures, of course, will give you a little bit more, you know, a little bit better idea of what it looks like when it's all dry and all done. So I hope that you like my project. I hope that you will be inspired to try to alter something in your home today. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the comments and all the support. And I hope you all have a beautiful day. Bye.